The natural beauty of the Philippines is known all over the world, but we have seen how our breathtaking landscapes and seascapes have been ravaged and neglected by people and by circumstances in a reckless pursuit of development. In our fragile earth, we visit places in the country declared as protected areas and sanctuaries. In these places, we discover interesting stories of brave and enlightened minds who work together to conserve and protect what remains of our dwindling biodiversity. Encompassing a staggering 118,000 hectares of the northern Sierra Madre mountain range and the adjacent Pacific coast. This protected area lies in the municipality of Peña Blanca, 24 kilometers east of Cagayan's provincial capital, Togegarao, north of Manila. First established in July 1940 as a Caliao Forest Reserve, it was renamed the Peña Blanca Protected Landscape and Seascape, or PPLS, under the National Integrated Protected Areas System. The lowland evergreen forest is a known habitat of the famous Philippine eagle, while the mossy forests are home to endemic rodents and frogs, as well as a nesting ground of the whiskered pita, a ground-dwelling bird. Limestone or karst forests in the western side lead to over 300 caves, many of which contain artifacts of significant archaeological and cultural value. Most iconic of these is the Kaliao Cave, Cagayan's pride, and best-known ecotourism destinations. Hands down, the chapel is a most photographed chamber, an alluring underground cathedral where many weddings and occasions have taken place. There is also the Bat Cave in Barangay Kibal, where millions of bats take refuge. Because of its fertile and complex biodiversity, the reserve has become a magnet for students, scientists, and even researchers. Matching the dynamism of its landscape is a watershed reservation and seascape. Pinakanawan and Padded Rivers are the two major rivers. Within the PPLS, these serve as a major transport route and source of irrigation. Springs and creeks within the PPLS are being tapped by communities for potable water. As a recreation area, many adventurers take boat rides upstream on the Pinacanoan River to view the limestone formations. Um, uh, through the national government natin sa Central Beach, uh, downloaded uh, different um, funds for the establishment of uh, different uh, livelihood projects. We have trained our two POs, namely the uh, Cable Women's Association and the uh, AXA, the Agudan Cave Site uh, Association. Nagbigay din sila ng, ano, ng dalawa naming bangkang demotor. Nagtraining din kami sa paggamit sa kayak at pinigyan din kami ng dalawang floating boat at saka tinuruan din kami kung paano magnegosyo, magkwenta, mag-ipon at saka kung paano mag-inventory ng mga pangangailangan na binibenta sa mga stalls mo. Bali, di damdam mo ma'am, uh, dati DNR nga napan dito ko ma'am, dito ayan, dito turok bayabo. Napandaan ng, ng meeting ID, napanggip ka na gito'y tree planting ko na dahil ma'am. 
Ah bali dagit nga bali dagit nga ko nga sidling in ti damit kada kami tapno kas jay ada ti mula mi ti pag biyaga mi mi so ajay nala mi mit amin dagit jay mula mi mit amin so ajay mam isu isu ajay ti dadu mga pangalam mi ti ko mam pangalam mi ti kani mi mit lain tapos ila ko mi mit lang ng jay mam Meanwhile, the local government is focusing on vital infrastructure projects to assist residents. Conservation requires investment. Wise and sustainable ecotourism is key to this as it aims to marry a face-to-face -face experience with nature with respect for the environment while promoting awareness and income-generating support for local communities. The Peña Blanca Protected Landscape and Seascape is assured of protection, conservation, and sustainability for future generations of Filipinos. Deemed one of the last remaining wilderness areas in the Philippines, the Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park belongs to the extremely high critical category when it comes to biodiversity conservation. It is among the country's largest protected areas, covering an area of about 350,000 hectares. The park is home to the Philippine brown deer and the Northern Luzon cloud rat two endemic species of crocodiles, namely the Philippine crocodile and saltwater crocodile are found here. The Bita Tawa. The Bita Tawa is a monitor lizard found only in the Sierra Madre mountain range. There are also species of marine turtles that regularly visit the coastal areas, such as loggerhead turtle and hawksbill turtle. The Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park was established in 1997 by virtue of Proclamation Number 978. It was officially established as a protected area under the classification of National Park pursuant to the Philippine Constitution by virtue of Republic Act 9125 in 2001. Meron din tayong mga katutubo dito, uh, yung sinasabi nating dumagat or agta, na sila yung unang uh, inhabitants dito si Sierra Madre. And another uh, considered siguro na uh, native dito is yung mga paranan. Dito lang natin makikita yung mga ano, taga-palanan pero ang salita, salita nila is paranan. So dito lang sila nakikita. Mabubuhay kami dito sa Sierra Madre. Makikita mo dito yung mga pagkain namin na wild crop. Tapos uh, manghuli na kami ng wild pigs, kumakain na kami. The greatest issue siguro or challenge dito is yung after na meron tayong uh, ilagan di Bilacan Road, um, marami na yung outsiders na pumapasok dito. Gusto nang uh, magkaroon ng lote. Uh, so the influx of migrants is medyo mahirap nang isolve. At yung talaga ang greatest challenge namin. Working together to protect the natural park as one family are the DNR, the local government units within the province, the towns of Isabela, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders. Even in the livelihood, we collaborate ang DNR with the LGUs in promoting and establishing livelihood projects within their respective localities. Ano? Uh, we have the Balay Ikan, it's a Fisher Folk uh, Association, at nagkaroon nga sila ng, ano, ng livelihood at nag-counterpart ang LGU sa training, likewise sa uh, DNR. Nung dumating po yung uh, memo sa akin ng DNR, nagkaroon po kami ng malaking produkto or proyekto po sa Butan Weavers Association. Nung na-improve na po namin sa Butan Weavers Association, nagkaroon na po kami ng NGP. As in actual na po ngayon na pinagkakitaan po ng maraming kababaihan at nasasakupan po ng mga tao. 
So, nagbuo sila ng provincial uh, task force para sila yung involved doon sa anti-illegal logging activities natin. At kasama rin natin sa pag -re research dito sa coastal areas natin, halimbawa ng seagrass uh, assessment, coral reef assessment, at fish uh, inventory within the park, ay ang BIFAR, Bureau of Fisheries. Today, the Northern Sierra Madre Natural Park as it is commonly referred to, offers a host of natural attractions where wilderness appreciation can best be experienced. Where there is continuous learning and enthusiastic passion in caring for Mother Nature, hope for the planet remains. Bataan Natural Park sits on a mountainous terrain north of Bataan, located at the southwestern tip of central Luzon. Spanning close to 20,000 hectares, the park was established as a natural park by virtue of Republic Act 11038. Unique po ang Bataan National Park sapagkat marami po siyang mga talon, Sa bilang po ng Bata National Park, meron po tayong limang po at anim na waterfalls. Sa limang po at anim na waterfalls pa nito, anim lamang po ang po pwede pong mapuntahan po ng mga bisita. Meron po tayo rito yung labing dalawang hot spring. Apart from supplying water to nearby towns, these hot springs and waterfalls attract hikers and tourists in search of scenic destinations. Considered a semi-evergreen lowland, the park is a natural showcase of dipterocarps like Lawaan, Tangile, and Apito. Pagdating po sa flora, sa dipterocarp, meron po tayo rito matatagpuan po na jade vine. May replacia flower po tayo. Isa po sa mga bago po natin natagpuan ay po yung tinatawag natin na Luperosaurus si F. Kubli na ang pinakamalapit niya pong kamag-anak ay yung pong nasa Sierra Madre. Meron din po tayo ng mga iba't ibang uri na endemic na halaman na dito lamang po sa bataan matatagpuan. Katulad po ng Psychotria bataanensis, Pamintang Bubat. Matching its endemic plant species is the wide range of animals who find protection within the park's forest cover. Dito, may mga nag-hunting po, uh, yun pong atin pong mga katutubo pong aita. Sapagkat, mayroon pong apat na settlement po ng ating mga aita ang nakapaligid po sa Bataan National Park na kung saan, dito naman po sila nag-hunting at kumukuha po ng kanilang mga basic needs. Working with the Protected Area Management Board, indigenous communities of the Aitas are actively engaged by PASUS or Protected Area Superintendents to help protect the forest. Iyan po ay mapoprotektahan sa simple po naming trabaho na pagpapatrolya, pagmamonitor kung meron pong mga nag-illegal activities katulad po ng illegal hunting, hindi po yung mga natural na pamamaraan. Ang alaw lamang po na mag-hunt po dito sa Bataan National Park ay yung pong ating mga kapatid na mga katutubong aitas na using po yung kanilang mga traditional na pamamaraan. A most salient principle of conservation practice within the park is its ridge to reef concept. From up in the mountains down to the coral reefs and rock formations within surrounding waters, efforts are made to ensure protection and sustainable development. Among the biggest threats faced by the BNP are the land speculators. Ang Bataan National Park po kasi ay adjacent po siya sa mga industrial area katulad po ng Subic Eco Zone at ang Hermosa Eco Zone. So marami po rito na mga land speculator po na gustong bumili ng mga lupa malapit po sa parke sapagkat uh, gusto po nilang gawin po iyan na mga businesses sa kanila pong negosyo at yung mga iba naman po para sa kanilang mga ecotourism na activities. Sila po ay nagkakaroon po ng mga agreement po sa ating opisina. Sila po ay nagpe-present po sa ating Protected Area Management Board na kung saan sila yung magpapasya kung papayagan po o hindi ang isang establishmento na makapasok po sa Bataan National Park. Today, 
the province continues to carve its place in natural history as home of a remaining old growth forest in the Zambales Biogeographic Zone, pulsating with the sounds and natural beat of the wild, the protected and the free. In the southern part of the Philippine island of Luzon, in the municipality of Ginayangan province of Quezon, sits the Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape. With the enactment of the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System or the INIPAS Act of 2018, on June 22, 2018, Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape was included in the list of 94 protected areas in the Philippines legislated to receive funding and absolute protection from the national government. It is just uh, 183 hectares and it is divided into two zones, the multiple use zone and the strict protection zone. We have recorded through our BMS 256 species of flora and uh, 136 species of fauna. We have uh, numerous uh, endemic fauna here in Maulawin, like the Coleto, white-eared white brown dove. Uh, we have recorded the Tariktik hornbill as a threatened uh, species here in Maulawin. Dito po makikita yung recently na sinabi po ni Dr. Pat na yung tinatawag natin pianga o isa po sa mga endemic species. Yung sa fauna naman po, kung sa Pilipinas po ay madaming endemic na kingfisher ay apat po ang matatagpuan dito sa Maulawin. Yung pong Philippine Dwarf Kingfisher, Indigo Banded Kingfisher, yun po isa sa mga talagang magagandang uri ng ibon na makikita dito. Maulawin Spring provides an abundance of fresh water not only for the area's wildlife but for the whole community of Ginayangan, Quezon. To date, more than 1,500 households are directly benefited by the protected area's water resource. Ang uh, Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape ang number one pong pagkukunan ng tubig ng aming bayan. Community participation and governance mechanisms contribute to the effective management and sustainable development of the Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape. Nagbu tayo ng PAMBI, the Protected Area Management Board, na siyang makakatulong ng DNR sa management and protection ng Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape. We did a lot of uh, IEC, Formation Education Campaign, and we create awareness among them that uh, this should be protected because it is the primary source of potable water to be utilized by the community. So we also organized the people, the tenured migrants, and then we converted them as partners in the protection, development, uh, of the protected area instead of threat. Kami po ay nagpapatrolya dito sa loob ng Maulawin, sa labas man, dun sa mga sakop ng iba't ibang barangay. Upang sa ganun ay mamonitor namin yung daloy, yung mga tinatakbo ng pamumuhay ng mga tao. Lalo tigit sa lahat ay isa po ako dun sa mga nagmamonitor ng ekoturismo dito sa Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape. Kung saan ang mga nagiging, naging tour guide po dito, mga certified tour guide, ay ang ating pong mga nangangalagang tenured migrants mula sa barangay Himbubulo Weste. Eh, na sila po ay nag-training para po sa pagkabuhayang binigay ng DNR para sila po ay magsilbing tour guide dito sa ekoturism zone. So, ang ginagawa po namin sa pangangalaga po ng PA, kami po ay... Monthly ay nagpapatrolling po sa loob po ng nasasakupan ng MSPL. Tapos po mga kami po ay nag 
nagtatanim uh, ng mga punong kahoy. Nagkakaroon po kami ng quarterling maintenance. Actually, we have partners today, the International Institute of Rural Reconstruction, uh, na tumutulong po sa amin sa pagbibigay ng uh, awareness, capacitation sa aming mga tenured migrants, sa mga tour guides. As stewards of the land, the people of Ginayang and Quezon deserves commendation for their passion in conserving their environmental treasure. Once again, the forests of Maulawin Spring Protected Landscape will reverberate with bird songs and gushing waters of the spring. Nauhan Lake National Park thrives under the constant watch of concerned local residents. It covers an area of 21,655 hectares that serves as a sanctuary to hundreds of endemic and migratory species. Proclaimed a national park in 1956 by virtue of Presidential Proclamation No. 282, the park features the fifth largest lake in the Philippines, Nauhan Lake. Nauhan Lake considered as the cleanest and greenest lake in the Philippines. Napakaraming hayop at halaman po ang matatagpuan nga po dito. Taong 2011, nakapagtala po kami ng almost 390 na uri ng halaman dito po sa loob po ng Nauhan Lake National Park. Pagdating naman po sa mga hayop, ay meron po kami total of 187 terrestrial vertebrates kasama po dyan ang ibon, um, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. Sa ngayon po ay meron po kaming uri na 30 fish species na naitala po dito po sa Lake Nauhan at 11 po dito sa 30 na ito ay kinikonsider po as migratory fishes. Na-declare ito na Ramsar site. No? Ibig sabihin, isa ito sa mga lugar na napaka-unique. No? We can count as much as thousands of migratory birds in one counting. Currently, it hosts uh, 123 species of resident and migratory birds. Ituturing natin siya na wetland of international importance. So, hindi lang pang community ang kahalagahan niya sa livelihood ng mga tao. Internationally significant siya dahil nga ng mga migratory birds na pag sa ibang lugar ay hindi uh, masyado malamig, dito sila pumupunta. But like many other patches of paradise, the pristine lake and the beautiful park are constantly bombarded by threats from poachers, as well as soil erosion and flooding due to climate change. Sa observation ko po, ang isa sa pinakamalaking uh, nakikita ng issue dito ay ang mabilis na pagdami ng populasyon sa Nauhan Lake National Park. Sa laki ng demand ng population na kailangan mabuhay dito, at uh, kailangan din talaga maghanap buhay dito sa Nauhan Lake kasi ang mga taga rito po ay nabubuhay lang sa pangisda at sa mga produkto na napuproduce sila dito. Sa pagdami ng populasyon, lumalaki din po ang demand na pangailangan ng mga tao na inirahan dito upang mabuhay. At the forefront of addressing protection and conservation of the park is a Protected Area Management Board. PAMBI is composed of national and local government units, educational institutions such as the Divine Word College of Calapan, and non-government organizations such as the Mindoro Biodiversity Conservation Foundation. Nakapaloob na ito sa aming annual investment plan ng conservation protection ng Nauhan Lake. Kasama dito ang pag-organisa ng mga mangingisda, paglalagay ng pharmacy or lake pharmacy, yan yung Lake Fisheries and Aquatic Resource Management Council, Bantay Lawa, Ito yung mga ino-organize namin para katulong namin sila yung aming implementing arm sa community para tulungan at mapangalagaan ang Nauhan Lake. Stakeholders from both local and national institutions realize that while on one hand protecting our natural capital is extremely important, the creation of livelihood and development of communities surrounding the protected areas should also be part of conservation efforts. Perhaps it is one way to ensure that Nauhan Lake National Park is headed towards a sustainable future.
At the heart of the Sibuyan Sea is a crescent-shaped island where this gigantic mountain destination is found. It is a centerpiece of one of the country's havens of biodiversity. Since 1996, when it was declared as protected area by virtue of Presidential Proclamation 746, it became known as Mount Gitingiting Natural Park. In the local dialect, the word Gitingiting means jagged. To island residents and mountaineers alike, the spiked profile of this giant landform serves as an ominous warning to take caution and extreme care in conquering its difficult and dangerous slopes. My height po siya na 2,058 meters above sea level. Ang Mount Kitingiting Natural Park din po ay isa sa pinakamahirap na akyatin ng ating mga mountaineers. Higher segments near the top are dotted by sharp boulders and ultramafic rocks that resemble the teeth of a saw. At the summit is a heathland dominated by grasses with stunted species of trees amid serrated ridges. Hardly touched by man for its remoteness, the mountain has remained a vital source of life. Dito sa Sibuyan, dito matatagpuan ang pinakamalinis na ilog sa buong Pilipinas for three times na nanalo po yan ang Cantingas River. Dito lang po yan sa Sibuyan matatagpuan. Frequently compared to the Galapagos, Sibuyan Island ranks among the world's most untouched ecosystems with extensive dense forests that are home to many endemic species. Among the most outstanding rare species in the upper reaches of the mountain is a Sibuyan pitcher plant that can only be found here. Mountaineers usually take souvenir photos with the plant as proof of their conquest. Over time, the growing population and the influx of commerce have created environmental challenges for the island. Other threats include unsustainable mining and illegal logging of precious timber. Ako ay isa po dating lagi illegal. Pero nung nararamdaman namin na paubos na paubos na yung mga kahoy, saka ramdam na rin namin na malalagay na po kami sa alanganin, kaya napag-isipan ko na itigil kami ang pag-illegal. Nag-IEC kami sa mga community, sa mga schools, nagbibigay kami ng aral. Tinuturo namin sa mga estudyante yung mga importance ng pagtatanim. Measures have been taken to resolve the increasing problem of waste management. Malaking potential ng aming lugar dahil ito yung pinaka-last frontier no? at pinaka-siksik na na gubat sa buong Pilipinas and at the same time kung makita nyo sa pagpunta nyo nakita nyo naka-red carpet kayo ng, ng, ng bakawan yung aming shoreline ay punong-puno ng bakawan so yan ang pinagmamalaki namin In the meantime, continuous research on Sibuyan Island's rare and endemic species require institutional and academic support Gusto po namin ma-experience nyo ang Galapagos Island of Asia Sibuyan Island. Dayuhin niyo po at ma-experience niyo ang lugar na pakagandang lugar namin dito sa Sibuyan. This is the Mount Isarog Natural Park. Nicknamed Volcan de Agua, the vast natural complex provides the much-needed water that keeps the province, its municipalities, and progressive city alive. Deemed an ecologically and economically important watershed of the Bicol River Basin, it has been a wellspring of life for centuries. So there are uh, 16 major rivers around Mount Isarog. There are uh, several water poles, totaling to about 100 water poles inside the protected area. That's why they call it Volcan de Agua. A potentially active volcano, Mount Isarog has an elevation of 2,000 meters above sea level. Within its lowland forest, 
one can find a tall canopy of giant dipterocarps, some reaching as high as 60 meters. Grasslands are dominated by kogon and talahib, while the mossy forest is inhabited by bamboo, pandan, ferns, and pitcher plants. Uh, crystal clear water, it provides irrigation to about 67,000 hectares of rice land. A perfect complement to the hardy trees and plant species are the endemic fauna that roam around and find their home inside the park's forest cover. For centuries, the mountain and its forests have been the home of the Isarog Agta. They belong to the Agta, Tabagnon, and the Agta Simaron communities. Yeah, sa ngayon po, ang nakatirang population sa amin is nasa 1,200 at yung household po is almost 200 plus lang po. So ang activities nila dyan, kinukonsider natin yung mga tribal practices kasi dyan sila kumukuha ng livelihood, gaya nung agricultural cropping, tapos yung iba handicrafts, hindi natin maiwasan, may kumukuha rin sila ng mga plants para sa pagkain nila dyan sa loob, then mga honey, mga honeybee, may mga kinukuha rin sila for their livelihood with coordination sa NCIP, National Commission for Indigenous People. So sila nagbibigay ng protection din dito sa ating mga kapatid na katutubo dito sa Mount Isarog. So hanggang ngayon, uh, kinukuha din natin sila pag may activity sa loob, sila nag-guide dyan, mga tour guide, mga sa turista silang kinukuha natin. Today, the biggest threats faced by the park involve the illegal settlement of park occupants, poaching of timber, as well as uncoordinated developments within and around the park. Pagka nasurvey na natin kung ilan talaga yung park occupants, bibigyan natin sila ng isang area dyan kung saan sila magkakaroon lang ng development, agricultural practices. Tapos meron din tayong local government unit, gaya ng Naga City, na tumutulong din sa protection ng Mount Isarog. Then meron din Metro Naga Water District, sila ang governing body. Inevitably, the role of Mount Isarog as Bicol's water tower cannot be overlooked. Today, the outlook remains positive as people and institutions continue to work together to protect and conserve Bicol's last rainforest, the Mount Isarog Natural Park. The Bulusan Volcano Natural Park lies at the tip of the Bicol Peninsula. It is an acknowledged ecological jewel of the province of Sorsogon. Bulos came from the word where water flows. This is also the home of the Bulusan Volcano, which is one of the most active volcano here in the Philippines. This is also the highest and the centerpiece here in the province of Sorsogon. Spanning 1,580 hectares, the park is a wildlife habitat and watershed complex that is home to several natural attractions and geologic formations. Aside from its three mountain peaks, it has iconic lava domes, limestone formations, three scenic lakes, waterfalls, a river with its creeks and tributaries, and a secondary growth forest teeming with endemic flora and fauna. Deemed the most scenic spot within the park is the Bulusan Lake, nicknamed the Little Switzerland of the Philippines. Legally recognized as a protected area by virtue of Republic Act 7586, Bulusan Volcano Natural Park is a premier ecotourism site. Within the park are two plant species named after Bulusan. These are Pronephrium bulusantum, a type of fern, and Schefflera bulusanicum, an aquatic plant species now named Schefflera caudatum. Significant dipterocarps abound in the forest, mostly along the periphery of the lake. Some 41 recorded species of trees are found here, among them the white lawaan, Nara, 
and acacia, a big percentage of endemic bird species that are globally threatened have been sighted within the forest area. Over the years, the park has faced daunting conservation challenges. The fortunate presence and leadership of individuals and groups of bonded residents gave rise to a concerted move to combat all these. There's a constant engagement with the people, the various national government agencies, the local government unit, and even private sector who partnered with us in the provision of livelihood to our beneficiaries. And this initiative becomes a conservation success because of the economic benefit that are being derived by the people who used to destroy the natural park. Awareness and appreciation, yan po ang pinaka-basic sa kahit ano pong conservation program. Today, the province of Sorsogon becomes you to experience its prime example of environmental protection at work at the Bulusan Volcano Natural Park. Fashioned by forceful winds and splashing waves, they are a silent testament to nature's artistic fury, carved over millions of years. These majestic rock formations of Biri are one of the geological wonders of the Philippines. A breathtaking vista, also considered as one of the country's best-managed protected areas. Undeniably one of the most photographed locales in the province, it is a key biodiversity area that has been proclaimed as a protected landscape and seascape in April 2000. Over 400 hectares of mangrove forests provide habitat to a host of flora and fauna, particularly local and migratory seabirds. Coral reefs cover more than 80 hectares of the waters, with beds of seagrass spread within outlying areas. Bilang paso, marami po ang mga uh, ang aming ginagawa dito kagaya ng regular monitoring sa dagat at sa, sa coastal and marine. At lahat ng mga aktibidades dito, kung may mga establishment man, ay dapat coordinate sa Beri La Rosa para sa kanilang kuan, mga proyekto. The Protected Area Management Board in Biri La Rosa brings together all stakeholders to a mutual level ground where coordination becomes key to the area's conservation. An aggressive education campaign on the do's and don'ts that visitors need to know is a big part of the community's efforts at conservation. Over the years, the association's focus evolved from protecting the mangroves to generating livelihood sources for its farmers and fishers. Malaki yung beneficyo na na kaya nga kailangan i, i, pangalagaan yung protected area kasi ito ang nagpro-protect sa ating kapaligiran eh. Working hand-in-hand -hand with these groups are tireless community members who have bonded into people's organizations to do their share. Uh, malaki ang naitutulog ng national government. Lalo-lalo na ng ma-declare na protected area ang tari na pinadaan sa DNR ang pagpapa-implement ng mga batas. Isa lang sa malaking tulong sa aming isla. Northern Samar's greatest geologic pride is in rock-steady hands of protection. Biri La Rosa, protected landscape and seascape. Situated in the mid-eastern part of the Philippines, Samar Island Natural Park was declared a protected area in August 13, 2003 by virtue of Presidential Proclamation No. 442. It is the second largest terrestrial protected area in the country, 
covering a staggering 335,106 hectares of contiguous old-growth forest that joins the island's three provinces, Northern Samar, Eastern Samar, and Samar Province. In terms naman po sa fauna, uh, dito sa Samar, ito yung kauna-una ang area na nakita yung uh, Philippine Eagle, yung national bird po natin. Uh, aside from that, dito din makikita yung Rafflesia, which is a parasitic na flower plant. Aside from that, nandito yung mga hornbills, yung tariktik hornbills. Meron kaming bisayan uh, broadbill, uh, narito din yung mga iba't ibang raptors kagaya ng serpent eagle. Sa flora naman ano, nandito yung mga giant ferns. The menagerie of life forms endemic to the Samar Island Natural Park is matched by its magnificent landscape. Largest cars in the Philippines, uh, or kino consider who kasi yung yung Samar, or especially po the Samar Island Natural Park, is uh, ano po siya mam uh, the keeping capital of the Philippines. Kasi dito po natin mahikita yung sa sa pinakamalaking cave sa buong bansa po. So what we call the Langon Gubingo Cave. So yung Langon Gubingo Cave na yun is um, kung kung familiar ho tayo sa ano mam sa football field. Tatlong football field, pwede ho natin ipasok yan doon sa loob, sa main chamber pa lang. Sa kalikasan kami kumukuha ng mga impormasyon tungkol po sa mga kalamidad at saka yung oras. Kung ano ng oras ngayon, kasi yung mga tribo eh, wala namang orasan yun. At saka doon din kami nagbabasi kung anong mangyayari sa mga kalamidad. Gaya ng mga ibon, kapag maingay sila at saka parang lumilipat na sila ng tirahan, ibig sabihin nun, ah, nag-aagat sila na mag maghanda na yung buong komunidad. However, the fragile beauty of Summer Island Natural Park faces different threats posed by inhabitants and local communities within the area. There are 240 so barangay, so a lot of people here, so uh, most of their livelihood activities are like farming. So they need the farming, uh, kainin making like that, then timber poaching, some others are charcoal making. The primary strategy is to fully transform the lives of locals through sustainable development programs that would wean the dependence of the communities on the resources of the protected area. Yung activity mismo is torpedo, pero yung pangalan din po ng organisasyon is torpedo din po. Uh, it's a people's organization na dati po sila, mga nag-iiligal, uh, they are very, very dependent to the forest, yung sa wood, pag, pag puputol po ng kahoy. But slowly, binigyan po sila namin ng ibang enterprise or livelihood para medyo mais na po yung pressure ng, ng forest na paggagamit nila. So ngayon, yung, yung boat na uh, dati nila uh, sinasakyan ng mga lumber flitches, turista na po yung, ano, yung sinasakay, hindi na po yung mga illegal na gawain. Minor forest products are utilized as raw materials for sustainable livelihood programs anchored on ecotourism. The conservation and protection of the Summer Island Natural Park is continuously ingrained in the indigenous culture and practices, even in child rearing. The task may be daunting, but when a treasured paradise is at stake, the people of Summer Island Natural Park are ready to accept the challenge. Sixth among the largest islands of the country, Panay is geopolitically divided into four provinces, Aklan, Antique, Capiz, and Iloilo. On the upper half is the northwest Panay Peninsula, 
covering Aklan and Antique. Here is where we find the most extensive and best quality lowland forests, a top priority site for conservation. Officially declared a protected area by virtue of Presidential Proclamation 186, the Northwest Panay Peninsula Natural Park is now classified National Park pursuant to the NIPAS Act. Here you will find the Visayan Leopard Cat, the Visayan Warty Pig, the Spotted Deer, the Negros Bleeding Heart Dove, the Blue Naped Parrot, the Visayan Hornbill, and Walden's Hornbill, and the Panay Monitor Lizard. Ang isang flagship na species namin dito na parang dito na identify which is endemic is the Baranos Mabitang. Hectares of old growth forests survive in the area, including tall, undisturbed dipterocarps, lower montane and bamboo forests. Dito mo na lang po makikita yung mga endemic at endangered species. Tulad na lang po ng mga uh, kinatawag nila dito bangkalawag, batiti, tsaka hindi lang po yun, napakarami po ng mga alaman dito na masasabi natin na dito mo, mo na lang talaga makikita at dito, dito na lang, ito na lang ang tanging lugar na hindi pa nakakalbo. As an important watershed, the forests within the natural park channel the water from the rains into a system of springs and rivers that provide water for over 100,000 inhabitants. Like many of the country's natural parks, major threats that confront Northwest Panay's existence come in the form of habitat destruction due to over-exploitation of lumber resources. Una-una, uh, conversion ng lupa mula sa kakahuyan, ginagawa nilang agricultural land, cuttings or uh, girdling, tsaka hunting yung hindi maiwasan po, yung dinadayo ng taga-ibang barangay. Within the last decade, however, illegal logging in the area had become well organized, with operators using silencers on their chainsaws, employing local informants at strategic points to warn them of approaching officials. So there was a drastic change sa kanilang hanap buhay. Alam niyo po ngayon, sila ay hindi na timber poachers. Sila na po ang ina-hire ni DNR na magtanim ng kahoy at saka mag-grow ng seedlings. At saka yung isang maganda pa nilang ginawa, nag-form sila ng isang kooperatiba. Isa po itong nakita kong successful story namin. Stakeholders within the locality are the first to be involved in livelihood projects and activities. Transforming the park and its nearby attractions into ecotourism destinations is now a priority. What remains to be seen is a sustained effort to protect it from bigger, foreboding threats like commercial mining, outside the park's confines, and continuous animal poaching. Today, at the heart of the Northwest Panay Peninsula Natural Park, the biggest hope lies in the concerted efforts of enlightened inhabitants and the strong political will of its passionate leaders. Spanning over 5,500 hectares of rice lands, the Sibalong Natural Park is nature's gift to the people of Antique. Situated around the watershed area of the Tipuluan and Mauit rivers, the park is located some 36 kilometers from Antique's provincial capital, San Jose de Buenavista. The Sibalo Mauit River was declared a watershed before. Then it was only in year 2000 that uh, President Era Pestrada proclaimed the more than 5,000 hectares as Sibalo Natural Park. 
Waters from the tributaries of the Sibalom River irrigate farmlands and provide drinking water to neighboring towns and villages. Aside from being a watershed, the park is a rich habitat of highly valued flora and fauna species endemic to Panay Island. We have the Visayan Marti Pig, we have the Visayan Spotty Deer, we have the Tariktik Hornbill, we have the Varanos Mabitang, and the Wild Dance Hornbill. The park plays a critical role as a corridor between two important bird areas in the island, the Northwest Panay Peninsula Natural Park and the Central Panay Mountain. A host of endemic bird species like the Negros Bleeding Heart and the Visayan Hornbill make the park their breeding ground. While reforestation efforts by the Department of Environment and natural resources have been in place for decades, much of the secondary forest areas host a number of wildlife that remains undocumented. Undeniably, the sustainability of the park's ecosystem is threatened by many challenges, including the unregulated cutting of timber and the gathering of non-timber products within the protected area. One of our uh, target activity uh, with the uh, approval of uh, INAI Pass, we need to uh, delineate this uh, area so that once and for all, all the stakeholders surrounding this uh, Sibalom Natural Park ay alam nila kung saan yung boundary nila. Yung ibang mga bantay gubat natin sa ibang barangays is dati nag sila. Ngayon, hindi na natin problema yung pag hunt kasi yung dating hunters na nag-iilegal, ngayon, they turned to be bantay gubat na volunteers natin. In the face of man-made destruction, and natural hazards, there is an urgent need to protect the biological wealth within the Sibalom Natural Park. If key sectors are able to seize opportunities to work together, nothing can stop the waters from flowing and giving life to enlightened residents protecting Antiques Sibalom Natural Park. It is impossible not to be captivated by the imposing beauty of Mount Canlaon. Standing majestic at 2,435 meters, this active volcano is the tallest peak, not just on the island of Negros, but all over the Visayas. Over decades, thousands of mountaineers and explorers have come to discover the wonders of the Mount Canlaon Natural Park, either to commune with nature or study the wildlife found in its pristine forests and water courses. The 24,388-hectare park is located in the heart of Negros Island. The park serves as a vital watershed that feeds into many rivers and streams of the island, which in turn provides sufficient water supply to lowland communities for domestic, agricultural, and commercial consumption. The variety of wildlife in the park some are rare and considered threatened species, undoubtedly attracts visitors to the area. Ecotourism is gaining momentum at Mount Canlaon Natural Park. Local and foreign adventure tourists journey to Negros for its renowned trekking destinations. Although the bounties of Mount Canlaon Natural Park offer opportunities, there are also threats to its rich ecosystem. Natural hazards such as the imminent yet unpredictable eruption of the volcano and even typhoons are beyond anyone's control. Human activities also pose long-term adverse effects. Habitation or incursion in the protected area should also be checked. Enforcement of laws and regulations, disaster preparedness, as well as implementation of policies has become a shared responsibility among the stakeholders. The community's active involvement is vital to the sustainability efforts of both the national and local governments. One successful community-based program is a Canlaon Green Brigade. Yung function namin dito, bali nag-stop ng mga illegal, legal logging, illegal trekking, 
At saka nagmo-monitor kami dito ng mga kung anong mga activities ng mga taga rito rin at saka mga visitor mismo. Working with people's organizations is also an effective way to educate the locals and encourage them to participate in environmental programs. The park's participatory development includes respecting the rights of its original inhabitants called the Bukidnon. There is a strong spiritual connection between the people and Mount Kanlaon, a silent, unifying force that pushes them to bravely explore and uncover its beauty while ensuring the protection and sustainable development of its bounty for future generations. Aptly named after the myriad of birds that hover over the gentle waters of the craters, the Balinsasayao Twin Lakes Natural Park offers a mesmerizing view that deserves more than just a memorable snapshot. The province of Negros Oriental, west of Dumaguete, is home to the Balinsasayao Twin Lakes Natural Park. Generally mountainous in topography, its most prominent features are the twin crater lakes separated by the narrow mountain ridge. The twin lakes are Lake Balinsasayao and Lake Danao. The twin lakes and their surrounding forests serve as a critical watershed for the province, as it contains the headwaters of five major rivers that sustain agriculture in lowland communities. In year 2000, the Balinsasayao Twin Lakes Natural Park was proclaimed a protected area by former President Joseph Estrada through Proclamation No. 414. With the passage of the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System or INIPAS Act of 2018, on June 22, 2018, Balinsasayao Twin Lakes Natural Park is one of the 94 protected areas legislated by Congress. Efforts to conserve the wildlife in the park have inspired stakeholders to identify and protect the threatened species. Identified terrestrial flora within the park revealed 237 plant species and some 124 fern species, many of which are globally threatened. Over the years, management of the park's land resources has been focused on the areas classified under the multiple use zone. Here is where traditional settlements and use of the land such as agroforestry, livelihood, recreation and most ecotourism activities are conducted. Based on the recent assessment conducted in our park, uh, number one threat is the, the illegal occupation inside the park. Uh, some are uh, cultivating the park for abaca plantation. Ang yung kahilingan po namin ay yung tenured migrant agreement po na may ibigay na po sa amin. Expectedly, only the consistent and collaborative relationships between and among stakeholders can help confront these challenges. Una, yung mga existing laws na bawal yung pagputol ng kahoy, agangat maaari, Zero yung ano eh, cutting of trees in Negros Oriental. Isa sa mga activity namin yun sa law enforcement plan is dapat mayroon tayong drone. Kasi nakita namin mas effective yung monitoring pag gumamit tayo ng drone kaysa mag-hire tayo ng maraming bantay lasang. Uh, we can only do so much. We need the support of everybody. Truly, in the hands of intelligent stakeholders lies the preserved and protected beauty of the Balinsasayao Twin Lakes Natural Park.
The Central Cebu Protected Landscape, or CCPL, spans 29,062 hectares of adjoining forest lands and watersheds. Established as a protected landscape on June 7, 2007, by virtue of Republic Act 9486. It's the best place and the only place where you could harness the rain and feed Cebu with water. Rivers, the watersheds are there, and not only the land, it, it's just the right geography, right kind of soil to cut the water, put it into our depository, the underground, and then water the entire metro Cebu. And that's the very reason. That's why Cebu is very, very progressive, because it has water. Aside from being a major source of fresh water, Central Cebu Protected Landscape is a crucial habitat for 144 endemic plants and approximately 188 species of birds, reptiles, and mammals. Unlike others, the protected landscape is made up of fragmented forests rather than a single contiguous area. Sadly, timber poaching, charcoal production, housing and settlement, erosion, and non-timber crop cultivation are slowly destroying Central Cebu protected landscape. To mitigate the impact of these threats, immediate solutions are collectively being done by the DNR, the Central Cebu Protected Landscape, Protected Area Management Board, Soil and Water Conservation Foundation, the local government units, and other stakeholders. Reforestation efforts have given birth to man-made forests, while ecotourism activities have opened up new livelihood opportunities for the residents. Key players in the conservation and management of the Central Cebu Protected Landscape aim for sustainability by instituting policies, deputizing park wardens, and securing adequate funds, they are clearly investing on the protection of the environment for the future generations of Cebu. Continuous conservation efforts with an undercurrent of sustainable development secures the fragile Central Cebu protected landscape as an eternal fountain of water and a vital natural resource for the people of Cebu. Acknowledged as a protected area in 2004 through Presidential Proclamation 570, the natural monument encompasses the mountain of Timpoong and the active volcano of Mount Hibok-Hibok located northwest of the island. Spanning over 2,203 hectares, it covers the municipalities of Mambahao, Mahinog, Sagay, and Katarman. We have 14 volcanoes all in all. So dahil sa taas ng height nila, naakit yung mga turistang umakyat doon. At saka marami pa rin mga makikitang mga endemic species doon. Uh, masasabing ito ay Amazon of Kamigin. Kasi nga um, ito ay nag-maintain ng clean air at saka nag-regulate ng temperature. The island of your imagination. Ito po ay 37 ASEAN Heritage Park and naging number 8 sa Philippines at third in Region 10. Of the 125 plant species recorded, 14 are endemic, five of which are new island species. Among the unique wildlife species found only in the island are the Kamigian hanging parrot, Kamigian hawk owl, Kamigian forest rat, and the Kamigian narrow mouth frog. Bird species include the black naped monarch, Philippine pita, and the orange-bellied flower pecker. Managed by the Protected Area Management Board, critical efforts to safeguard the island reflect a collaborative interplay between stakeholders from local and national institutions. We have a task force who goes around and checks every area there, like if there are trees that are being cut, Pumupunta rin po silang community meeting sa lugar po na we're in uh, malapit po sa PA area at doon po 
Nagli-lecture sila. Kami, pati po na mayroon po ang kasama mga barangay para ma- ma-inform po yung mga community sa mga endemic species po. Palagi po kami, every three months po, yung monitoring namin, tsaka patrolling po sa iba't ibang area po. Ang ridge to reef talaga tayo. Kasi ang ganda ganun na ng ano namin, reef namin, pero masisira lang yun kung utol kiputol ng kahoy, maglalanslide. Here in this island born of fire and cradled by deep island waters, the delicate balance of nature is an everyday story of biodiversity nurtured and protected by the men and women of Mount Stingpong Hibok Hibok Natural Monument. The Malindang mountain range straddles Misamis Occidental and Zamboanga Peninsula, dramatically rising up to 2,404 meters above sea level. It displays its grandeur over Osami City and its neighboring towns. For Mount Malindang's crucial significance to life, culture, and survival, it was proclaimed a national park and watershed area in 1971. A protected area under the National Integrated Protected Area System, or NIPAS, in 2002 and an ASEAN Heritage Park in 2011. Designated for conservation is 34,000 hectares of wilderness, dense forests and woodlands, rugged canyons and ravines, surprisingly amphitheater-like landscape and sinkholes believed to have been formed by volcanic eruptions eons ago. Water is a lifeblood that flows through Mount Malindang. These extensive river systems supply fresh, potable water to over a million residents. The Subanon, the only ethnic settlers in the province, have a special relationship with nature. Custodians of their homeland, they are striving to keep and practice their traditions in the face of danger of disappearance. Ang Bukid Malindang, Ah, uh, importante gina sa amo kay sa kani adto mao ginay amo ang kadangpan ug panginabuhian mao ang Mount Palindang tungod kay anaa diha ang mga uh, espirituhanon amo ang balaan ang bukid nga Malindang. So mao na ang amo agyong gi mahal ang Mount Palindang gikan sa kani adto sa among mga ginikanan ug hantog garon na kami nagpabili ng Osaka, Subano, uh, Ginsalugan, Teres Mount Malindang. The slash and burn farming leads to soil erosion, destruction of habitat, forest fire, and biodiversity loss, and ultimately contributes to climate change. And when mass tourism, overdevelopment, and commercial interests take precedence, the delicate ecological balance will be tipped. With 34% of Mount Malindang already cleared, its remaining forest cover needs to be conserved and protected before it's too late. Through the involvement of community in environmental education and regular monitoring of illegal activities, locals developed a sense of ownership, making them mindful of the environment that sustains them. Livelihood trainings aim to build capacities among the Sabanon people lead to the development of sustainable income sources. Sustainable development and impact monitoring of ecotourism help conserve and preserve the unique attractions as well as the sacred sites and the natural landscapes. The future of Mount Malindang is a shared vision, a joint undertaking that relies on the collaboration of government and the local community. Beyond the city of Zamboanga, its booming economy, reflected in its vibrant streetscape and colorful cultural attractions, another jewel crowns this southern part of the Philippines, one that is gleaming with crystal clear waters cutting across polished stones and green terrain. This is the Pasonanka Natural Park. 
Bago po ito naging Pasunangka Natural Park, pero claim mo na itong isang uh, Pasunangka Forest Reserve. Then, through PP199 po yun. Just recently, na-legislate na po siya nung ma-amend ang RA7586 o so RA11038, being categorized as Natural Park Considered as one of the last remaining old-growth forests of Mindanao, the Pasunangka Natural Park encompasses 12 municipalities. As a protected area, the park cradles diverse species of flora and fauna. More critically, it supplies water to the locality for domestic, industrial, and agricultural purposes. It's uh, the watershed that provides uh, the water needs of uh, Sambanga City as a whole. Then it also supports the uh, education system here in, in this region. Ensuring the long-term protection of the park are passionate stakeholders who work closely with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. They have active representations in the Protected Area Management Board, or PAMBI, the highest policy-making body within the park. We have a great stake in the preservation of the watershed. No? More than 70% ng membership companies ng industrial group ay atin mga producer ng sardinas. Lahat ng brand ng sardinas nakikita nyo sa department store and grocery stores ay galing dito at gawa dito sa Sambuanga. Kailangan ma-preserve namin ang watershed dahil ang mga tamban at ang mga sardinas na nilalata namin ay nanggagaling lang din dito sa mga dagat natin na surroundings. Kasi ngayon, ang nagpoprotekta karunitan dito is yung tinatawag nila itong Monte, Guardia Monte or Forest Guard. May 128 more or less sila Forest Guard na umiikot dito nagtitin, uh, nagtitingin, uh, pinoprotektahan nila. Gusto namin sa susunod na kung i-capacitate yung community. As the morning sun glistens over the waters, stewards of the Pasunangka Natural Park start their work. They implement environmental policies, set targets, collaborate on conservation projects aimed at protecting this fragile treasure in Zamboanga. The Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary lies within the Agusan River in the province of Agusan del Sur, northeastern Mindanao. Its ecological significance spurred its protection through Proclamation No. 913 in 1996. In recognition of its global value, the Ramsar Convention included the Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary in the Ramsar list of wetlands of international importance on November 12, 1999. More recently, in 2018, through the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System, or ENIPAS, it received stronger protection under Republic Act 11038. So, Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary is considered a cradle of life in the province of Agusan del Sur because it's um, it's actually a catch basin. The water coming from Davao, Compostela Valley, and Surigao merge in Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary dito sa Agusan del Sur. Kasi lahat ng tubig dito talaga siya, hinuhold ng Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. So without Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary, yung Butuan City will be submerged underwater. Yung mga municipalities along Agusan River will be flooded during times of uh, heavy rains, during times of rainy season. The Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary features seven types of wetland habitats, the largest expanse left in the Philippines. Notable among the wetland habitats found in Agusan Marsh are peatlands. Peatlands cover only 3% of the Earth's surface. But according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, about 30% of global carbon is stored in these peatlands. That's twice as much carbon that is stored in the world's forests. 
Agusan Mars Wildlife Sanctuary holds the Kaimpugan Peatlands, which is considered the largest and rarest known peat swamp forest in the Philippines. Apart from being a rich feeding ground for migratory birds during winter season, it likewise provides refuge to a host of rare plants and animals that include Philippine endemic but threatened species like the Philippine crocodile. Isa ding unique feature ng Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary is the presence of our brother Manobos, the Agusanon Manobo who live in floating houses. The indigenous knowledge systems and practices of the Agusanon Manobo community contribute to the economic, ecological, and socio-cultural value of Agusan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary. Sa ako lang, nakita yun na ako ang Agusan Marsh. Pinaka-importante sa mua, sa usa ka tribong manubo, sa Agusanon kay maunay among paningabuhian. Kung walay Agusan Marsh, dili sa ingon nga pagpaubos na mua ang amu ang pagkatao. Maglisod yun mi kung may Agusan Marsh. Hindi tanan ang amu ang kinanglanon. Kay kung may Agusan Marsh, murag dili yun makapaiskwila ang mga tribo sa Agusan Marsh. Kay nga ano, maura ni amu ang yaman, kaning isda, importante lang pag-aampingan sa sunod pang henerasyon para ang akong anak masubay pa sab nila makita nila kung unsa ang kaklase sa isda kung unsa kadagkuon muna karon na naningkamot mi sa kami nga pangidaron nga among gihatag sa among mga anak sa mga kanang kinaiyahan nga maayo para sa sunod ilaha gihapon madala sa ilang anak para ang kinaiyahan hangtod nga hangtod daw sama sa ingon sa akong nabalhan nga habang buhay the convergent efforts of national and local government local residents, indigenous communities, as well as local and global environmental organizations have all managed to keep Agusan Marsh a sanctuary protected for both nature and humanity. The Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape covers the coastal areas of Compostela Valley and the province of Davao del Norte, including Pindasan and Copiat Islands in the Davao Gulf. Owing to its verdant terrestrial and rich marine resources, it was brought to the spotlight of conservation as a component of the National Integrated Protected Area System or NEPAS Act of 1992. In May 2000, it was proclaimed a protected area. It is also included in the 94 Legislated Protected Areas under Republic Act No. 11038 or the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System Act of 2018. Seven coastal barangays are covered by the protected area, from its dense inland and beach forests to the rich diversity of marine life. The Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape is home to endemic, rare, and endangered wildlife. The collective conservation efforts of the government and the community such as the Scuba Sorero, a monthly coastal cleanup of underwater garbage, are important in achieving a sustainable future for the Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape. Bilang Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Officer, Ang uh, trabaho ko po is from ridge to reef. So since ang coastal po namin is uh, isang MPLS, may mga series of activities kami na ginagawa dito. Like uh, coastal cleanup, then mangrove planting, then we have the Escobarillo. The Mabini Protected Landscape and Seascape is confronted with issues and problems that often come with development. Foremost among these is the management of garbage and illegal fishing.
Kaming mga babayinan, mitabang yun sa pagtanaw, sa pagprotekta sa among mga uh, yamang dagat din he, sa among lugar. So, nag-schedule ni isa sa isa kabulan sa pagpamunit sa mga basura diri sa among mga palibot sa hunasan. Kay mahadlok mi nga ang mga basura makaadto sa dagat. So, makadaot na siya sa atong kalikasan. So, kami nga mga uh, Women Association dito sa MPLS, nagkaroon kami ng mga project, halimbawa man lang sa pagluluto, nag, uh, banana chips, taro chips, ginagawa namin yon para makatulong. Kasi hindi, hindi tanan ba nga, dilitan ng panahon nga, mag lang ni sa dagat, magsaling. So. Conserving nature is not just about preserving the beauty of landscapes and seascapes. It is understanding our critical role as wise guardians tasked to nurture and protect. Key to all this is embracing development that is both sustainable and science-based, and the kind that is in balance with nature and the environment. Pride of place is a key ingredient in developing one's love and respect for our natural environment. When you and I take a stand in protecting our land and our waters, when we go beyond our business as usual attitudes and begin to make a difference, we become our country's source of pride. It's our turn to take a stand. Our fragile earth is in our hands.